If you've been considering whether you should purchase a P1S or an A1 from Bamboo Lab, then stick around because I'm going to talk about the pros and cons of both of these printers. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about the P1S and the A1 from Bamboo Lab. I'm going to go over a bunch of different topics on both of these printers. I'm going to talk about the pros and cons. Now, I'm not trying to convince you that one is better than the other because they really serve different purposes. They're both fantastic printers. I'm very happy that I own both of them. Uh, yes, this A1 has been uh, repaired. Um, I did the self-upgrade path. I got my $120 uh, credit from Bamboo. So this one is back in action and working just fine. So anyway, they're both fantastic printers, um, but they're quite different and they have some places they excel and places that they don't. And I'm going to cover some of those. So you'll see me um, talking or referring to my notes here uh, throughout the course of these videos um, or this video here. But uh, let's just dig right into uh, this. And we're going to start with um, the ease of setup. So with the A1, when you, um, the, you, know, you unpack it, you pull it out of the box, um, you're going to attach the base of the printer to the vertical frame here. Then uh, you, there's some cables to attach on the bottom. Uh, you install the little purge wiper here on the tool head. And then the AMS light comes in uh, several different pieces. So that takes a little bit of time. And then you attach the PTFE tubes here um, and then you're good to go. So set up on this one, I don't remember exactly how long it took me, but definitely less than an hour, probably right around about 30 minutes. There's videos. Um, if you go to the Bamboo Wiki, they have all the instructions there. Of course, you're going to get an instruction manual and they have videos uh, that you can follow along. Now the P1S, um, is fairly similar it's a much larger printer it's a heavier printer so you know pulling it out of the box is a little bit uh, trickier um, so with this one you you know unpack it from the box and then um, the AMS if you buy the combo the AMS is actually inside of the unit so you've got to uh, pull that out there's some shipping screws and like some extra plastic that actually uh, hold this all together so you got to take those screws out then you, you pull the AMS um, out from the uh, top. There's some Z-axis screws that you have to remove. Uh, you attach this little screen here. Now, I will, uh, at this point, let me talk about this screen. I have upgraded my P1S, uh, and I will talk about a little of that in this video, but uh, overall, this small screen here is the one that comes with the printer. What I've added here with the uh, Panda Touch is a secondary screen. Um, as well as this AMS riser, which gives me some additional uh, storage capabilities, uh, places uh, for the tray here, uh, etc. So um, this is not exactly uh, stock here, uh, but you attach the little screen. There's a spool holder uh, for a single filament. Uh, if you want to go that route, you put that here uh, on the back and then you attach the AMS. Um, I can't say that one is necessarily more difficult to install uh, than the other. I feel like, I don't know, I don't know why, but I feel like it took me longer to set up this one, even though the A1 uh, seemed to have more steps, uh, but I could be mis misremembering that. If you own both of these printers and you can recall, um, if you have a, an, an impression or an experience of which one was easier to set up, uh, go ahead and drop that in the comments. So the, um, you know, the initial setup for both of these printers is very easy, especially when compared to some of the other uh, printers like my Prusas back there that uh, I both purchased as kits. Um, the uh, Mark III was the first 3D printer I got, and I did buy that in kit form. And it took me the better part of a day. So probably I think it's, you know, eight to 12 hours to uh, assemble that one. But that's the way that it's designed. Um, you're definitely a lot more intimately familiar with the uh, setup and operation of a printer like that when you have to build it from scratch. Um, but these things are nice and quick and easy to get up and running and they print beautifully. 
So we're gonna move on. I'm gonna cover really quickly here some feature comparisons because a lot of people will just assume that the uh, P1S being a Core XY printer is going to be a lot faster than the A1 or the A1 Mini. Um, although I'm not gonna really cover the, I don't even know the specs on the A1 Mini. But um, let's talk about some feature comparisons between these. So the tool head speed, this is the tool head. Um, same thing, you can't really, uh, well, I guess if I, I should open the door here on the P1S, the tool head, I don't think you can, I just pulled something off of it. I don't know if this is a good idea or not, just to be manually uh, moving this thing around, but the tool head here on the P1S, if you can see that now, it's toward the bottom of the screen there. The max tool head speed on the P1S is 500 millimeters per second. All these uh, values I pulled right off the uh, Bamboo Lab website. The tool head speed, max tool head speed on the A1, also 500 millimeters per second. The maximum acceleration, so how quickly it can get up to speed, the P1S is 20 meters per second squared. The P, oh, excuse me, yes, that is correct. 20 millimeters per second squared on the P1S. The A1 is actually 10 uh, meters per second squared. So twice as much acceleration on the P1S. Um, max hot end temperature is gonna be 300 degrees Celsius on both. The max build plate temperature is 100 degrees uh, Celsius on both. The build volume, it's actually printed on both these, uh, well, maybe it isn't. I thought it was on the, on the plate. Um, maybe it's just on this one. No, nope, I must be remembering. Oh, it's, it's actually right here. It's at the bottom, uh, of the build plate and it is on both of them. So the uh, max build plate volume for both of these printers is 256 by 256 by 256 millimeters, uh, cubic. So, um, you will find there are a little bit of asterisks and caveats on that because sometimes just to, based on the design of the printer, and whether it needs to come over and cut filament or because of the design, um, you may have some limitations on getting all of those uh, values in the X, Y, and Z uh, directions. Now, let's talk about the recommended filaments for these two printers. What you're gonna find is there's gonna be quite a, uh, a vast difference. So with the P1S, uh, the recommended filaments are PLA, PETG, TPU, ABS, ASA, PA, PC, PVA, and PET. That's what the website lists as the ideal filaments versus for the A1, they list PLA, PETG, TPU, and PVA. Since the A1 is not an enclosed printer, um, some of those filaments are more susceptible to changes in temperature. So just the slightest, you know, gust, a little breeze, if you got a fan running, somebody opens a door in your room, all that kind of stuff can affect the ability to print. Um, the P1S, because it is fully enclosed, is going to have a much uh, greater range of recommended filaments because of that fact. Um, both of these have a camera on the uh, A1. The camera is, is installed uh, just over here to the side. Um, on the P1S, it is, uh, I think it's, gosh, it's been a while. I don't even remember because I don't use the camera that often. Um, I th it's over here on the right-hand side. But let me just tell you, neither of these cameras are great. Um, they are not comparable to like the X1 Carbon. The X1 Carbon has a much uh, better camera, and it is, uh, I guess, I think maybe it's the electronics, the CPU in the printer itself um, can handle higher frame rates. So for your P1S, it is listed as having a low rate camera, 1280 by 720, so 720p at 0 0.5 frames per second. So half a frame per second. You are going to get a very slow slideshow when you're looking at prints from this printer. Uh, the A1 also lists a low frame rate camera up to 1080p. They don't give a frames per second, but I can tell you they're about the same you're gonna get a very slow camera feed. It's good enough to see what's going on, um, but neither of these have like the advanced features like spaghetti detection uh, because like, again, going back to the X1 Carbon, 
It's got that high frame rate camera. It can tell when something is going wrong with your print because the camera has that capability. Neither of these printers have that. Next, let's talk about ease of use. So the A1, since it's a fully open printer, I find that it's a little bit easier uh, to have access to everything. So whether that's um, removing the build plate here and reinserting it, since you can see all of the uh, plastic guide pieces that are along the back here, um, it's very simple to put the build plate back in place uh, properly. Things like lubricating the rails are gonna be a lot more simple and especially tool or, or hot end changes. This front cover just pops off. You take the silicone sock off here and on this printer, there's just this little clasp here. You open up this little gate and then the, uh, uh, the nozzle pops right off. So putting another one in is, is just as easy as doing the reverse there. You also have this touchscreen control here. You can, you can control your filaments. You can set the colors, all of that kind of stuff. Um, all of your controls, not, well, you can, uh, you can affect the speeds, but temperatures, all of that, turning the light on, uh, everything is right here on this uh, nice little touchscreen. So open, easy to use. Um, I'm, I really like how simple it is uh, to deal with the A1. Next, we'll talk about ease of use on the P1S. So since it is an enclosed printer, it's gonna be a lot darker inside. So we do have one uh, light here. There's a small light bar up on the left-hand side. Um, the camera is also over here on the left-hand side. I was having problems pointing that out before. But um, again, being an enclosure, uh, you are going to have, it's just a, it's a darker situation. Now I'm going to turn on uh, another light here. So hopefully we can shed a little more light onto this subject as we uh, investigate ease of use here in this video. Um, so things like installing the plate, like I mentioned on the A1, I actually, in the back of this printer, I printed a little uh, guide to help this because I was having so many problems. When you're lining this up, it can be a little bit trickier just because it's dark um, if you don't have that extra light to see what you're doing. Now, things like a hot or things like nozzle changes on this printer are going to be a lot more tricky. Um, this cover is magnetically held onto place, so it's a little easier to remove than on the A1, but you can see there's a fan here, so you've got a, a cord that's connecting it. And then honestly, I have never changed the nozzle on this one. Um, I do have additional nozzles, but you've got some wires here that you have to unclip. And uh, you, I believe you actually unscrew these nozzles. So um, not that it's overly difficult. I will say it's, you know, changing the nozzle on any bamboo printer is a heck of a lot easier than changing the nozzle on my uh, Prusa printers because that's a, I got to get out tools and socket wrenches and things like that. Um, and that is a, a major event. And then there's a lot of uh, tuning that has to be done uh, after that because the Z, it does not automatically set the Z height. So a lot more that needs to be done uh, with that. Next, we'll talk about operation of the printers. I already talked a little bit about the A1. You do have that nice touch screen. So it's a little bit easy to navigate all of the menus. Here on the P1S, you just have this uh, LCD uh, display. It's just a, a black and white display. It's not a, it's not a touch screen. You've just got this uh, little pad here. So you've got these menu icons. Um, so that's where all of the controls are done. So it's a matter of, of sorting up, down, left, right, hitting the okay button. You have a pause and a, and a, and a kind of a back button on here. So, um, a little more difficult, uh, to navigate with this printer um, and you get a little bit less information. So for example, if I take this off, um, I should get an error. I think I got one last time. So if you see over here on my Panda Touch, I get this error and it says the front cover of the tool head fell off. If you got the Panda Touch, you get that information. You can see over here on the display screen, I got a code. It was this HMS 
you know, here's this code that's flashing, but I don't know what that means. And then it disappears. So again, little, little less information that you're going to get, um, you know, stock on this printer. Uh, but again, not a deal breaker. The handy app, uh, makes it, uh, so that you can control a lot of these functions that you wouldn't normally have, um, with the, uh, the small display. The next aspect that we are going to take a look at is going to be how much noise do these two printers produce? So what you see here in front of you is a decibel meter. Now I'm going to reposition it. I'm going to position it about two feet from the tool head on either printer. We're going to start with the A1. I'm going to send an identical part with uh, similar uh, print settings to each printer. And we're going to get an idea of just how much noise each one creates. Now we're going to take a listen to the P1S. So we have it set up. You can see the green uh, decibel meter there again is about 24 uh, inches from the tool head, which is kind of in the back of the machine. It's going to be all over the plate. Now, right now I have the door open, but when I'm printing, I'm actually going to close the door because that's how I use the machine. Um, different filaments, they suggest, you know, whether or not you have the door open or you can actually open, uh, this top lid here. It's a little hard to maneuver with this, uh, um, riser on top, but, uh, I actually have a TPU printed, um, gasket here to keep that closed. But anyway, I have never printed with the doors open. So good on me, bad on me. I don't know. Your mileage may vary. But when I'm printing, I typically close the door. So that will have an impact on the sound. It should make it a little bit quieter. However, what you find with this machine is that it just kind of resonates. And so you'll see that it's a, a little bit louder. So let's send the job to the printer and let's listen to how it does. While we wait for this to begin, let me just give you an idea of the difference in the information that you get here based or the comparison between the two screens. So the, the built-in screen, you can see I have some basic information, some temperature, uh, the speed that it's going to run out, about how long this will take, and the name of the file. Um, if we compare that to what we get on the Panda Touch, um, we also have the same temperature information about how long it's going to take, but it also tells us what the printer is doing right now. It's preparing, or the heat bed is preheating, then it'll clean the nozzle tip, and then it'll do auto bed leveling. So our noise test is now complete. You can see the finished product here. Both parts are very uh, similar in, um, you know, quality. Slight difference in the uh, the filament. I believe this is a uh, Overture PETG. This is an Elegoo PETG. Um, but uh, you know, print quality is exactly the same. Speed was about the same. There was a slight difference. It was a four minute difference in print time. I think the P1S took 30 minutes. The uh, A1 took 34 minutes. And I looked and it looks like mostly it was just travel time. So I think uh, I'd have to look at the settings. I think there might have been a slight difference in the uh, trans, uh, 
transverse or travel uh, speed settings between the two printers. Um, but again, like I said before, time was about, or you know, time is about the same, speed is about the same on these two printers. Now, when we talk about noise, I think the highest I saw when the A1 was printing was 46 decibels. And I think I saw the highest was 59 decibels on the uh, P1S. And you could probably have uh, heard the difference during that uh, demonstration. Next, we're going to talk about the AMS, or the Automatic Material System, for each of these printers. We're going to start with the original AMS, which is utilized for the P1S, the P1P, and the X1 Carbon. Some of the pros about the AMS unit are that on these printers, you can utilize multiple AMS units. So on this printer and the X1 Carbon or the P1P, you can actually use four of these uh, AMS units that will give you up to 16 colors uh, for printing. One of my favorite features about this unit, and I would say the biggest con about the AMS light, is on the AMS, you can see that this is a sealed unit. You've actually got clips here um, on the top. There is a, a gasket. You can see it's actually, uh, there's, a, there's a rubber gasket here inside. Um, so this seals pretty well to keep moisture out of your filaments. So I have printed, um, and that is actually kind of one of the features, in the back of this or in the very bottom of this unit, there are uh, two chambers that you can put desiccant in. And then what you see here is I have printed, and these are available on Maker World and other places, um, these white parts in the front are actually full of even more desiccant. And then this one actually, this one has a uh, desiccant meter. So you can see I'm at 21% uh, humidity inside this unit and I can keep it sealed. Now there is no heater inside. It doesn't actually dry out your filament, but by having these desiccant holders in here, you're actually to maintain a pretty decent uh, level. I've 21% is the highest it's ever been since I've put anything in here. Um, now, I will say that this may be slightly misleading because my, my uh, humidity sensor is right inside of a desiccant holder. So, but again, I usually don't have any problems with my filament and I don't have to take this out and uh, dry it. So that's one of the, probably the biggest pro overall of this unit is the fact that it holds um, your filament in there and you have the ability to keep it dry. Some of the cons, you can see I do have some cardboard spools in here. I have, uh, the problem is there's some rubber drive rings uh, in this unit, or not rings, but there's some rubber rods that actually uh, drive these um, spools. And when you change colors, it actually has to retract all of the filament. And I'm going to, I'll flip this thing around and show you um, uh, the path that that has to take. So it's got to be able to drive the spools uh, backward at times. The cardboard spools, just by nature of it being paper, it rubs off on that, on that rubber. And that will cause it to um, not be able to grip as well. So you have to clean those. Now, there are some solutions. I have printed some uh, plastic. You, you, you print, uh, you know, using your filament, you can put some rings on these um, spools, and that definitely helps. Some people use just black electrical tape. Um, I've had a number of occasions where the, the, uh, those rings have actually broken uh, during the midst of a print, and I'll come back and these will be jammed. So it's not always a perfect solution and there is very little clearance at the top of this so even if you have um, a slightly large spool or you put something on there then it may not operate properly so the the fact that cardboard can um, pose a problem that's a little bit of a con um, next i'm going to talk about uh, the retraction length so let's flip this thing around now on the P1 series, uh, the filament, when it is changing colors, as you can see here, there's only one tube that comes out of the AMS. So you've got this, which is well over a foot, maybe a foot and a half. You've got another six to eight inches here. And then there's another foot that goes inside the printer um, to the tool head. So you probably have somewhere between two and a half uh, to three feet of filament. So every time you do a color change, this, uh, the AMS has to retract all of that filament. There's actually a four-way 
interchange inside the unit that it's got to get past and then it re-rolls uh, the filament on there. Now there's nothing that guides that re-roll process so it is possible you'll see when it does that. Um, every once in a while you could get a, a, a tangle um, from that. And then that little four-way splitter, if you go on the forums, you'll see people have, you know, if a, if a filament breaks in there, um, you can have problems and you basically have to take uh, this unit apart. You gotta take all the filament out. There's a, a tray on the inside. You gotta take some screws. So it's not super difficult, but it's gonna take you, I don't know, I've never had to do it, but it could take you 10, 15, 20 minutes to clear a jam if it happens on the inside of the unit. So. Um, just by nature of the way that this is designed, not that it's bad in any way, but it is how it works and it, uh, you just have a very long uh, retraction path and if something goes wrong, then it's going to take some time to get things back working again. Now we'll switch over and we'll talk about the AMS light. So some of the pros on the AMS light, so we just talked about the retraction length being very long on the AMS. The AMS light, completely different system. It works totally uh, differently. You can see that uh, we've got four tubes that go over to the tool head. Now, when you change colors on the A1 or the AM, uh, the A1 mini that utilize the AMS light, um, you basically only are retracting your filament from the hot end up to here. This is where, once it's cut, it retracts only this far. So you're talking What's that? Four inches of retraction. So it's a simpler process. You've only got one motor for each of the four colors or four spots on the AMS light. Um, whereas the AMS has that fifth motor inside at the uh, junction um, where the four colors have to come together. These are actually spring loaded. So when it does reverse it, there's a spring inside each one of the hubs here and all it has to do is rotate just a little tiny bit. So you, you have less prone to tangle uh, here on these because again, you're only, you're only uh, retracting about four inches versus two and a half uh, to three feet. You do have multiple mounting options. Obviously this is the base that it comes with. So you can just set it next to the, uh, to the A1. There is a recommended um, distance. You do need to have these, this is actually not positioned uh, optimally just for this video. You want to have it a little bit in front um, and about 10 inches again. They tell you exactly where to place this, but you don't want your cords uh, to start banging into things like this. Um, you can mount this on top of the rail here. They, there are things that you can print to make that happen and some additional stability uh, brackets that you have that. You can see here on this, I have all cardboard spools. Cardboard spools are not an issue. You, they're not an issue because you are not relying on a rubber roller uh, to turn these at all. Um, these are the rings that I was, was talking about with the AMS uh, before that I have printed to put on these, uh, these spools. Um, so you can handle cardboard spools on this. Now, some of the cons with the AMS light the biggest con about this system here is your filament is out in the open. Presently, um, let me see here. I'm going to grab my little meter, my little uh, height, whatever you call these things. It tells me the humidity. In my room right now, it's 54% humidity. So you, could, you saw before I was at 21% on the AMS. All of this is going to be sitting out in the open, so it's 54% humidity. I'm in Florida, um, and that's probably a little lower than normal because I am running an air conditioner in this room. So my filament's out in the open. There is no way to keep this filament dry. Once I start noticing that I have, you know, issues with uh, wet filament, then I'm going to have to take that and put it in a filament dryer. But as soon as I take it out of the filament dryer, it's back out in the open. Um, you do have some limitations on the spools because, uh, or excuse me, on your, your filament. If you have filament that has a larger um, size hole, then you may have to print some spool hole adapters so that this fits on the hub. So that can be a little bit of a, a drawback. And then again, 
um, or I shouldn't say again, but you can only use one AMS light with the A1 or the A1 Mini. There is no ability to add additional AMS light units. There is a second port on the back of the A1, um, but Bamboo has said that you can only use one. I don't know if that'll ever change in the future. I doubt it because if you think about it, each one of those AMS light units is going to bring in four PTF tubes. So you would have to have, if you put two, you'd have to have an eight to one or more. You'd have this big mess of tubes and that's that would be an increasing amount of weight for this tool head uh, to drag around. So if doing more than four colors is something that you are looking to do, then the A1 or the A1 Mini is probably not the printer for you. You probably want to jump over into the P, uh, P1 series or the X1 series or whatever Bamboo comes out with less, or excuse me, whatever Bamboo Labs comes out with next. Before we get into my final thoughts on both of these printers, um, let's talk about poop because both of these machines have to poop. Now, on the A1, this is the area when it does a color change, it purges into this area and it will just fling it wherever it happens to be. Now, the what I normally do with the A1, I don't think I really have the room for this here, is I have printed what is affectionately known as a poop bucket. So this normally would be sitting uh, at my printer just like so. And now I have a space so when it does do its business, it lands here. On the P1S, the poop goes down this chute so when it purges filament it will go down this chute and then there is an opening in the back so you can put a bucket again i have one that i have printed uh, so everything it has a little more tidy place to go the a1 just kind of flings it wherever um, so you never know you'll have a pile or a mess uh, to clean up if you don't have a bucket now one last thing i want to talk about um, definitely a uh, a plus to the a1 is how it cleans the nozzle or gets rid of um, filament at the nozzle tip. On the P1, let me, if I can get this out of the way, this little roller right here, I know it's a little bit hard to see, but that the nozzle comes over and it flicks over this little rubber nozzle in an attempt to clean it. Sometimes this works, sometimes it doesn't. Let me show you how the A1 handles that. On the A1, we have this little, let me move this out of the way. We have this little grid of uh, rubber teeth right here. And so this unit actually comes over here and it, it rubs this, uh, it rubs the hot end over this set of rubber teeth. Uh, and then a little later on, both units actually do a final clear on the build plate itself. It actually scrapes it on uh, the metal here. So I would definitely say the A1, I have less issues where I will see, you know, string or um, filament uh, hanging off the hot end when it shouldn't be. Uh, this is definitely a better solution. All right, let's cover the, my final thoughts on these two printers. Now, I am very happy that I own both of them. Originally, I purchased the A1, and then we ran into the heat uh, bed recall issue, um, and I didn't want to be without a bamboo printer, so I invested in the P1S. Uh, neither of these were sent to me by bamboo. They were both purchased with my own money, and I'm very happy that I own both of them. Now, the P1S does have a slight speed advantage. As you remember, the acceleration is a little bit greater, but honestly... You, it's extremely rare that you're going to hit those max speeds. These things are constantly changing direction. They have to ramp up, but they very rarely ever get to that 500 millimeters a second um, that is their top speed. So the P1S may have a slight speed advantage. We're talking, you know, depending on the length of your print, maybe it's 10 minutes faster than the A1. But overall, um, they're very much about the same. Now, you are going to have more filament options with the P1S because it's enclosed. So if you're looking to print some of those more exotic type filaments or you have a reason to do so, then an enclosure-based uh, design is better for you. 
Bamboo does not recommend putting the A1 um, in any kind of enclosure. You've got some electronics in there that, uh, you know, the, it's all designed to handle the heat in an open environment. If you put it in a closed environment, uh, you may have problems. Um, the A1 takes up more room. You can see the P1S, the size is its size. Nothing is moving back and forth. You don't have any extra space that you have to worry about. The A1, because it's a bed slinger, um, the bed is moving back and forth. There's the heat bed cable in the back. So you've got, you know, quite a bit of distance that you have to uh, consider. And then if you have the AMS light, you've got to either put that off to the side and there's a recommended location for this device, or you put it on top, which is going to, you know, take up some space, very similar to the P1S. Um, I like having it off to the side because I do like the ability to have a single spool on here if I don't want to mess with anything. Um, in on that's a, installed on the AMS light or change out any colors, although it's not hard to do. Um, I do have the ability to just add, um, you know, I can throw a spool on here and then you just take out one of these tubes and put it into the uh, little hub here at the top. And now I can just use a single color. Um, you can't beat the price on the A1 combo. Um, I think I paid $5.59 or so when I got it. Uh, Bamboo is running a sale here in June because they probably are getting ready to release another printer. So if you're seeing this video in June and the sale still going on, um, the ability to get into a printer that has this much capability and multicolor printing for what, 400 ish, four and a half, uh, you know, four and a half hundred dollars. That doesn't make any sense, four and a half, 450 something dollars. Um, that's incredible. I paid more than that just for my uh, Prusa uh, Mini. Uh, and that, you can't do multiple color printing and it's much more difficult printer to use uh, than this. Don't hate me in the comments uh, for saying that. Um, and finally, the bamboo printers are extremely easy to get up and running. You're gonna take them out of the box. You're gonna follow the, you know, the installation uh, process. You're gonna do, they pretty much calibrate themselves and then you are going to install the software. You can print from your phone. You can print from your computer, but the prints come out. There's very little uh, that you need to do to get an exceptional print with these printers. So I highly recommend either of them. Um, there's probably not a bamboo printer that I wouldn't recommend. I, the, the bamboo, the A1 mini right now um, is ridiculously inexpensive. So uh, smaller, smaller size. I think it's 180 by 180 by 180 versus the 256 that you see on their other printers, but you know, equally uh, capable printer with fantastic results. So, um, overall, I would say that you can't go wrong with either printer. It's just a matter of figuring out what you want to print and, um, choosing, uh, you know, what machine is going to work best for you, just like any other tool out there. All right, gang. I know this was probably a long video. I do have a tendency to just talk and talk and talk, but hopefully you found this video useful, especially if you're in the market uh, for a 3D printer. Um, hopefully the uh, information that I've shared with you today will help you make an informed decision. As always, if you like what I'm doing here on the channel, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell. So, you know, when I drop new content, I'm excited to keep growing the channel and, um, sharing information with you, whether that be 3D printers, uh, laser engraving, laser cutting, uh, or CNC woodworking. And occasionally we talk about pool robots, but you never know what you might see here on Directed Tech, but I'm excited, like I mentioned, to uh, keep growing the channel with you. So as always, let's just keep learning and burning together. Take care, everyone.